What's up, my Weber peeps? It's Mr. Stanger once more here to talk to you about Chapter 4. Uh, so today we're going to talk about the Yellow Book Chapter 4 for retail, uh, also the Weber State uh, buying and merchandising credit. What we're going to pretty much talk about today are two different things and how they apply to different parts of our actual school store. Now, for this, I want you to remember that if you're not working the school store, you still need to know a lot about what we're talking about. So some of this is very specific to the actual school store. Please just learn it. And some of it might be on your test. I'll warn you when it's like, this is for sure on your test, even though it might not be uh, broad in the area of uh, like retail. This is something that I test on. So make sure that you do that. Um, the two main things that we're going to talk about today are policy and procedures. I apologize for my crappy handwriting and spelling. If I spell something wrong, just write it in the comments and be like, yo, Stanger, you suck. And I'll be like, okay, it's all good. But the idea of policies and procedures can pretty much be applied to everything in the business world. In order to succeed, we oftentimes have to make rules. And it makes it so that we know what we can and can't do. And in order to succeed, we have to know those boundaries and we have to know the proper order of things. Now, policies are usually set by higher management, and they can almost be thought of as the overall rule. An example of this, we might have a policy in the school store or in another store to have good customer service. That's probably given to us by higher management and they're like, in order to succeed, we know that we have to have this. Here's our rule that we want you to do. Now, middle management or lower management creates procedures in order to actually follow the policy. These are what I would call step-by-step -step guides to follow a policy. Now, policies and procedures, when used together, create success. So with this overall policy, we talked about um, customer service. Management might have also put step-by-step -step ways to make it so that we could have good customer service. Things like always greeting a customer. If they're within five feet of you, you say hi. Or every time that you refill someone's drink at Chick-fil-A, you say, can I refresh your beverage? And when they say, thank you, you say, my pleasure. Little things like that or the step-by-step -step guides make it so that we know that we're actually reaching our overall policy. Now there's policies that are about all sorts of things. We're going to talk about a couple, but the first one that I want to talk about has to deal with cash. Now we deal with money. The idea of retail is the idea of money and it going in and out as we exchange goods for the money. That's what happens every single day. Someone gives you money, you give them something else. Now, one of the procedures that we use in order to keep that money safe is we use something called a till. Now, the till is found inside of the cash register. We put it inside of the register because the register keeps it safe. As you open it, and close it, you know that when it's closed, it's locked so that no one can just come and grab it. Most of them are also safe from fires. And so it makes it, if there's some accident that happens, you can make it so that you're going to keep it safe. The other thing that tills can come in handy for is organization. Now I'm going to draw up here how our actual till in the school store is set up. Most tills are set up pretty similar. Right here is an example of a till. You would be right here, so this would be the bottom of it, this would be the top of it. The way that they're usually organized is you have $1 bills here, $5 bills here, 
$10 bills here, $20 bills here, and all the other stuff will mostly sit here. Now there are different stores where they'll put $100 bills under the till, but we're just gonna put other because that's what we do in our store. Now the same thing happens here. So we have pennies here, nickels here, dimes here, quarters here, and then we have other here as well. The idea is, is that as you receive money and give it out, you continually place it in the correct spot to keep yourself organized and make it so that we can do this as mistake free as possible. Now, another thing that we do while we're actually uh, using the till, we're going to use this different cash register to record sales and to do different things like that and make it so that it all works. But at the end, we have to reset the till. We like to close it out, as I would say. So to reset the till or your starting till amount, we do something like this in the warrior window. Now, even if you aren't working in the warrior window, this is one of those things I'm gonna put a star by because you need to know this, okay? We keep zero others in there. We keep zero twenties in there. We keep. Oh, I lied to you. One, ten, two, fives, and twenty ones. We keep twenty quarters, ten dimes, ten nickels, and five pennies. This is what we start and end every day at. The magic number that it should equal is forty six fifty five. Now, most stores probably keep a lot more than $46.55 in their drawers, but we're a very small one, and so in order to operate, this is what we keep. This will also be on the test. Please know this. I know it's dumb, but if you guys were all in class, you'd all know it because this is how it all works. We make it so that we can run the school store. Okay, other things that I want you guys to be aware of. Um... We talk about buying change. So one of the things that you do in order to make sure that your drawer is always balanced, right? I want to make sure that I'm never short or over, meaning that I have too much cash in the drawer or too little cash according to the records that the cash register actually keeps. And one of the ways that we do that is by buying change. So say you have someone come and they've given you a hundred dollar bill, right? And you're like, I don't have the change to make this. I don't have enough 20s to give them back the change necessary to do that. You could buy change from another register. The way that you buy change is you would be like, hey, I have a 20, I need fives. So you would give the $20 bill to me. I'm the one that exchanges it. In other stores, there's different uh, procedures and how to do it. But you would give the $20 bill to me and I would give you four fives. You just bought these four fives by giving me the $20 bill. You don't have a different amount of money in it. You just exchange this $20 for another way to make it. Does that make sense? It's pretty basic. I don't think we need to talk too much about it. Um, but I hope that makes sense for you guys. Other things that I want to talk about um, are... Um, pretty much we're just going to talk about different kinds of procedures and how you can talk about them in the store. Um, so the assignment is you guys actually making a video on how the school store works. Now I get that some of you guys aren't in school and so your training videos might be a little bit different, but some of the procedures that we have in the school store right now go like this. We have our COVID policy and that's not me making the policy this is the health department coming and saying this is what we have to do um every time that we go into the store we get our temperature taken we sanitize our hands we put gloves on we make sure our masks are secure when we go in we make sure that if we are the cash register person or the people dealing with money we touch no product if you are a runner, you touch all product except for drinks. If you're the drink person, you only touch drinks. 
Um, other things that we talk about. Uh, you must always close the drawer after every transaction. That's just to make sure that the money's safe and we're not worried about you sitting out with it right there. Um, we talk about how we're continually looking for people that might be shoplifting. Um, and if you catch them, then I actually reward you. Um, other policies or procedures that we have. We have a policy of good customer service. I like you guys to talk to these guys and say, how can I help you? Or uh, actually talk to them. But I don't like you to say just, what do you want? Right? The whole goal is to have a good idea and a good attitude as we go along. Now, I want you guys to kind of use your imagination of what the actual store might have. If it's a policy or procedure that you're like, I'm pretty sure the store has this, go ahead and make a video of it. Your video only has to be a minute and a half long. Um, but if you have questions or concerns, let me know. Now, one more time, just to review today, policy is the overall rule. Procedures is how you follow it. You're going to make a training video of a minute and a half to five minutes, and you'll be good. Let me know if I can help. You guys are awesome. Stanger out.